15 minutes. minutes. Literally, that's all you need to build an impressive physique. I'm not making this up. If you do it right, you can train as little as 15 minutes a day, build muscle, build strength, and look impressive. In fact, we did it ourselves. We tested it ourselves. Now there is a right way to do it. And that's what we're gonna talk about in today's episode. But yes, 15 minutes is enough to build an impressive physique. Wasn't it Arnold who was famous for saying that he could come in and do one set of an exercise and it'd be more effective than someone spending like an hour in there? Isn't yeah, that, most isn't people that, in the gym doing an hour. Yeah, yeah isn't, now, that what now, he, isn't that what he used to say? Yeah, and I think what that the problem with that quote is that it, it uh, kind of makes people think it's all about intensity. So it's like, oh, I'm only gonna do one set, so let me just kill myself. About efficiency. Yeah. Do you think that that's There's, all? Do you think that I don't think that's all he meant by that? I don't though. think so either. Yeah. But I think yeah. people, people perceive and, it. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. He knows what he's doing too, which is yeah. a major factor. Yeah, I think the important thing to understand as we get into this topic is the first off, we have to understand the true value of uh, of exercise, right? The true value of workouts. People confuse what happens during the workout with the beneficial, valuable goals that they get from the workout itself. So while you're working out, you're burning more calories, you're sweating, you know, all that stuff's happening. And we tend to place all the value on that. So a short workout is not valuable because well, what could I possibly, how many calories could I burn in 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. Not that much, which is true. But that's actually not the value at all. The value is in the adaptation that the workout itself um, elicits. The workout itself stimulates an adaptation. So the question really is, can you send the right signal for adaptation in just 15 minutes? And then when you ask it that way, the answer is yes, you absolutely can. In fact, you can ask any fitness coach who's been doing this for a long time and they'll answer yes. So that's the way you should ask the question. I think that poses it the right well, way. Well, it's really the mm -hmm. difference between uh, training and exercise, right? Exercise is just the idea of going, moving. is moving and burning calories, right? And and that concept is pretty pretty basic pretty easy and uh, mm -hmm. almost anybody can do it in any order, any fashion, but to move your body, make it change, change your body composition, build muscle, burn body fat, sculpt your physique, increase performance, requires some level of understanding of training. Otherwise you're just going to the gym and you're just exercising and something that is programmed really well uh, can be extremely effective. And it's not about uh, the, the time that you spend in the gym as it is, how effective is the single movement or single or the, or the few movements you are doing in that short period of time. Right. It's all about stimulus. How can I send the right signal to my body, create the right environment so that that signal then tells my body to change in the ways that I want. It's not about the damage that I create. Now there is some damage. There's some stress that happens from, from working out and training, and that does send some of the signal, but that's not all of it. It's not even close to all of it. It's really all about uh, the stimulus. How can I get my body to hear this and then respond and adapt and change in the way that I want? And, and here's your evidence, by the way. If it was only about damage and sweating and burning calories, it would be easy. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the, it would be super easy. All you would have to do is go to the gym and get sore and tired. Do and hard it, stuff. And it wouldn't matter. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you wouldn't have to go to the gym. You could do this in, the, in your living room and it wouldn't even matter. And, and you know, it's funny, a lot of people think that. They think that the that if they just did that and they just did it long enough that they would get results. But uh, people who've tried that will tell you, it doesn't work that way. You, you get something and then your body stops progressing. And then you're on the slippery slope of doing more to get less, more to get less and nothing happens. Then you end up going backwards. When you do it right, the right formula, the right application, the right stimulus, you, you work with your body. You're actually figured out how to get your body to change the way you want. And again, uh, 15 minutes done the right way can do that. It's it, it's enough time to do that. Well, I mean, this is somewhat related, but uh, I remember when I was trying to develop this product for isometric training and like realizing that you know, the actual effort that people are outputting a lot of times doesn't even get captured. Like, so you can't really see that as much in terms of like, you can see that with weight moving, you can see that with um, obviously form and, and somewhat of their intention, but like in terms of like turning that into adding more muscular tension, recruiting more muscle fibers, like that's, that's all unseen. That is all completely intrinsic. And that's another way to maximize whatever the heck it is that you're doing. If you're setting your body up in good 
postural position, I'm isolating a muscle if that's my goal, or I'm like really trying to intensify yeah. uh, that specific exercise without adding a lot of like excess um, load and in, in that's going to like, you know, uh, damage it further. Like I'm just like producing more of that um, uh, force output, like that totally transforms the exercise just that alone. Yeah. You're talking about doing it right. Uh, doing it the right way. You know, one of my favorite categories of clients to train, and I'm sure you guys felt the same way when you would get that client who's been working out for a while and is, works out all the time, can't figure out why they can't lose that 20 pounds, can't figure out why the body isn't changing. And you get them and then you look at their workout and what they're doing and you know, Oh wow. Like they're already showing up. All I got to do is move a few pieces, yeah. maybe have them do less of this, more of that. And it's going to blow their freaking minds. And I would do that. And Doug is, a, is an example of that. When Doug hired me. Hey, you reduced his, his load. I reduced yeah. his load and trained him properly. I gave him good programming. And I explained this concept to him about sending the signal. And again, luckily I'm convincing because I convinced him to, to trust me. And Doug, who'd been working out for years and years and years, all, who thought he had the worst genetics, his body wouldn't respond. All of a sudden he achieved this incredible physique and he worked out like two or three days a week. Um, with me and it was all because we did it the right way. Mm -hmm. I really feel like I could split my, all my clients into two buckets. Um, you were either the client who fit in the bucket of struggled with consistency and discipline and never, you know, even strong three months of, you know, good, not even great, just good eating habits and consistent training or, you were the other side who have tried everything. You tried all the supplements. You've followed all the magazine plans and every diet. And you you, you like working out and you and you you know how to push yourself. There's like literally there was like this clear divide. You felt you could have I could put almost mm -hmm. every client in one bucket or the other. And the ones that were in the I'm frustrated. I've tried all these different things. Most of them were over just overdoing it, overdoing yeah. it in the sense of everything. They're, they had their sleep was off because they're stressed. They go go getters at work all the time. They their training intensity is off. Their volume in their and, and training is off. Like their balance of nutrition to their vault was off. And so more often than not, scaling those people back ended up producing more results. Now, granted, having the right balance nutritionally, I think makes a huge difference, but I, there was this clear divide in my, in my clientele that Same. I could fit you in one of those two buckets. Same. Yeah. I remember I, you, you ever play that game at like modern arcades have these games now where you, you win tickets, right? So when we were kids, it was all video games. Now it's like half, it's like you could win tickets or something. And there's this one where it's this big rotating wheel and you have to crank down on this, this crank and it spins the wheel. And if you hit the right pressure, you get the jackpot. If you go too little, it's like one ticket. If you go just a little too hard, it's one ticket. Literally, you have to hit the perfect pressure to hit the you jackpot. Like the, like the price is right? Wheel? Yes, yes. And, <laughs> and, 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 and I've seen that one, so the boardwalk. This is exactly what it's like with training. If you hit it the right way, jackpot. Yeah. Too little, uh-uh, nothing. It's the sweet spot. Too much, nothing. You, and so, so how do you know what the right spot is? Well, you start to understand exercise programming. You had to understand how to apply intensity, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All right, today's giveaway, MAPS 15. That's the program we talk about in today's episode. I'll give it away to one of you, okay? So here's what you do. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, everyone else, in today's episode, we talk about how you can make incredible gains working out just 15 to 20 minutes a day. By the way, MAPS 15 minutes comes with two versions. It comes with a, a convenient suspension trainer version, but then it has an advanced barbell version where you're doing these compound lifts. Anyway, if you're interested in the program, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code MFP15. That'll give you 50% off MAPS 15 for this episode. All right, back to the show. But the starting point is this. The starting point is understanding when you're going to the gym, or you're picking up a dumbbell or a barbell or doing an exercise, the, the idea is I'm sending a signal. What's going to send the right signal? And am I going to overdo it so that my body can't adapt? Am I going to underdo it so my body doesn't get the message? Mm -hmm. What signal am I sending? Is this going to be effective? Or am I just here trying to sweat? If you're just there trying to sweat, well, then, then it doesn't matter what you do. Just sweat. If you're there to get your body to change and you really want to see consistent change in a way that's maintainable or sustainable, then you want to do it the right way. Well, it's funny because if you think about any other 
like program that's tried to attempt to like condense a workout down to like, you know, something like 15 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever. Like what the do they do? Yeah. Cut the rest. They make cut it the rest for you, making the hardest, like craziest, like, um, burpee loaded, yeah. weight loaded type of a workout you could possibly have to where it like destroys you like in like a short amount of time. Uh, meanwhile, what's that going to look like for you next <laughs> workout that you have lined up, ne- you know, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's just the intensity is just one of those things that has just been like buried, uh, down people's throats, uh, that that's the answer. If you have to like, you know, uh, be reasonable and, and judicious with your time. Yeah. No, the reason why that is, is because the average consumer can't understand how I can do in a workout that's effective in a quarter of the time. So if you beat the crap out of them, now it makes sense to them. Like, oh, yeah. okay, I see why this well, works. It feels like they did something. Yeah, wow, way. I did 10 minutes, but oh my God, I almost died. Like, that makes sense as to why it doesn't work that way. Intensity is a, is a factor, but it's it, it, it's part of the, the formula. It's like eggs in a cake. Like, you're like, oh, eggs are important, so let's just put a bunch of eggs in a pan. Well, you're not going to have a cake now. Mm-hmm. You just have an omelet. So uh, that's intensity, frequency, volume tempo like all these factors play a role and if you do it right you don't need much nope. it, it really does work the right the right amount is the least amount to elicit the most change that's it that's the, that's right, the right amount, amount. and the and the the positive part about that this way used to tell people that are just getting started that's exciting is guess what because you haven't done shit it's yeah. gonna take very little it take as much to elicit think. change because you haven't been doing anything for six months a year two years three years the beautiful thing is we're going to make a, a few subtle changes in the right direction nutritionally. We're going to make a few subtle changes in in exercise and training and movement, and you're going to see change. And the goal is to just stay ahead of that, that plateau curve, right? Like we're going to add just a little bit, watch your body start to change, stay there for a little bit of time, and then right before you start to plateau, add a little bit more or change up a little bit. And the goal is for me to do just a little bit more and keep you progressing all the way through. Right. So, okay, so someone might be like, okay, well, well are there studies on exercise to show uh, if if there's one form of programming superior to another? And, and there are, yes, there's lots of studies, and they can be pretty illuminating. One thing that they've studied that's pretty cool is that when the total volume of your training is equated for, now there's there's going to be some extreme outliers here where this won't work, but generally speaking, when your total volume is equated for, then it doesn't matter if you do, let's say, two one-hour workouts a week or 15 minutes every day. I don't, I don't know what 15 times 7 is, but I think it comes out to roughly two hours a week or something like that, right? So 105, something like that, right? So essentially, maybe not, maybe essentially, if you did the same total time, same total volume set, weight, you know, reps, everything equal, except here you did it all in one or two days or, and here you did a little bit every day. uh, What they show is that the, the, it doesn't matter that the total volume really is what matters. Now where it starts to change a little bit is, if you're doing too much in one day, fatigue sets in and stuff like that. But yeah. old, but basically, it's like this. Like, okay, so if I hit my chest three days a week or if I hit my chest once a week, which one gives me better results? If everything's equal, it doesn't matter. Really, the studies show that it kind of doesn't matter. It's all about the total amount of volume. So could you get good results doing 15 to 20 minutes a day? Well, add it up. Add it up. What's what, what's the mass? The minute, what's, the, what's that add up to? 20 minutes a day, seven days, 140 minutes a week. That's over two hours a week of exercise. Could you get good results with just two hours of good strength training? You could. So it's it's the same thing. Now, there's a bit of a flaw in that study because like every, every study, it's taken over the course of six to 16 weeks probably in a small frame of there. And the, one, the thing that it's not accounting for where the 15-minute workout is superior is that person who practiced chest once for the week gets practiced the bench press one time that week. Yeah. But the person does 15 minutes and they do the same amount of sets, but now it's spread out over Monday, Wednesday, Friday, now gets to practice bench press three times. And the compounding effect of practicing practicing that movement more times in a week over the course of months, over the course of years, makes you better at that movement. Making you better yeah, at a movement more reps. means you get more out of the exercise. Getting more out of the yeah. exercise equals more results. Yeah, so let's back up for a second. So I said I mentioned fatigue. So one of the, the biggest enemy towards building strength and muscle, all things being equal is fatigue. Mm -hmm. This is why you do sets with strength training and muscle building. This is why, this isn't why you, you grab dumbbells and barbells and don't rest. If I just go from exercise, 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 and just do reps, 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 reps with no rest, I'm not going to build muscle or strength. I'm just doing cardio. 
what makes strength training strength training is uh, you you train within a particular framework of fatigue and then you rest and then you repeat. You do sets. That's clearly the biggest difference between strength training and not strength training, even if you use the same equipment. So fatigue is the enemy of strength building and muscle building. Okay. If we go back to the example of doing all of your chest workout in one workout versus spreading it out, here's what ends up happening by the time you get through halfway of your chest workout. Fatigue is there. Yep. Fatigue setting in. So it's not just that you're practicing more by dividing it and spreading it out through the whole week, Adam. It's that you're practicing better. Right. There's practice. What's that? What's that saying in sports? Well, and there's like, pra like practice makes perfect. Perfect practice. Practice makes uh, perfect something or something like that. It's like yeah. like practice. The, the way you practice is how you play, right? If you could take fatigue out of the formula, then your practice is better. The way you perform the exercise is better. So it it, it technically is better to do. Instead of doing nine sets of bench press on one day to do three sets three days right. a week. Because you're yeah. teaching your body that movement at its its intended function and its highest like level. So it's it's you're you you wanna always like address it like this is what now I'm setting the standard for in mm -hmm. terms of like um, you know, how my body is gonna respond and react. Uh, so yeah, to be able to like take the fatigue element out, that's, that's really where form and, um, in, in terms of like force production and being able to like generate, uh, the kind of strength, like you start losing that ability, then, you know, you're, you're still teaching your body those with those reps. So if you eliminate that part and you just keep the good reps, it just, uh, compiles in a good, you know, direction. I, I also think that the, the volume doesn't normally stay the same either. And I speculated with you guys the other day when we discussed yeah. this topic. Great point. Is that, you know, volume is sets times weight times reps, right? Or any, yeah. in that, any way in that order, right? It's basically multiplying all that together. So if you take somebody who bench presses, say, a total of 15 sets in a week of bench press, and they now divide it over, you know, three days – what, in, what ends up happening is you have the ability just to put more weight on the bar because you're fresh each time you go to bench press. Right, versus With, all in one day. Yeah, all in one day. By the time I get to sets 10, 11, 12 on chest. Your volume went down. Way down. Yeah. I'm way weaker. Everybody knows that, right? So if you actually take that, that same person and you now divide it up over three. Now, all the studies, they wanted, they wanted to measure volume being equated the same. So they had to adjust for that. And what we've learned from the studies is that there is no one better than the other. But when you add in the element that, do you really think you're as strong? And you think that you would not put naturally just, add, oh, how many times have you gone to bench press? You're like, oh, I feel good today. So you add another five or 10 pounds. That's happening when you spread that That's out. That's how over. it works in the real world. Yes. when you, you know, Very few people are actually diligently tracking their volume. No, I you can just, only do this many reps. That's okay. right. That's no, right. You do as many reps as you can do with good form. And if you're, if you're doing this exercise broken up over the week versus all in one, you're going to do more volume for sure. Yeah. Cause you're yeah. fresh a hundred percent. So yeah. I think that people are also, you know, not considering that, that the volume probably isn't going to be equated. And I know that's what the, 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 they intentionally do that for the studies just to prove the point of, you know, three times a week, once a week or twice a week, it's, you know, splitting hairs, which one's better. But the truth is you're getting more practice, which was the point I was trying to make. And I know yes. you have in your notes to make. And then on top of that, you probably actually add more volume. So, which is why we're seeing so many people that have been lifting for a long time that have gone through like mass 15 and they're going like, what the hell I'm seeing PRs or yep. I'm seeing better results. I've been training for a long time. I'm an advanced lifter, but I think these are some of the factors that people aren't thinking about. That are I happening. hit a PR when we created the program, you were following it. You were getting great results. I did like the 20, 25 minute version. So more advanced with like barbell stuff. And I hit a PR in a deadlift that I hadn't hit numbers even close to that uh, until like maybe 10 years prior. And I worked out less uh, from doing something like that. So it, it definitely works. You know, I, I was thinking in terms of like a, a parallel there, when somebody switches over from always doing high reps with like crazy fatigue to then doing like low reps where they have to rest, you know, I mm -hmm. noticed the uh, dramatic, you know, shift in where they're like, wow, I, you know, I can keep loading more weight. And it's like this phenomenon for them because like literally you're just taking out what normally you'd, you'd work through fatigue mm -hmm. and you're just like hyper focused on like performing that specific exercise at it's it's like peak level yeah and there's also like the practice element there's another part of practice with exercise which and we forget that exercises are skills so the more often you squat the better you get at the squat the better you get at the squat the, the more results you can derive from the squat so the better you are at exercises 
in terms of control and stability and range of motion and connection, the more you'll get out of them. Well, you know, again, if you did 15 sets of squats in one day, how are you going to be practicing that skill by the time you get to set 10? Now you're just fatigued and it's all about just hammering your quads and your glutes and your you're hamstrings. You're trying to get it through it. Right. But what if you did, I don't know, two sets a day, you know, and one day you did three sets every day. You practice it every day. Yeah. Every set, you would look good. Every set, because you're fresh, you mm -hmm. practice, you, you would develop the skill of squatting much faster and much better, thus deriving more benefit from this amazing exercise. Well, and this is really what I what I took away from that st statement from yeah. Arnold was that that he has practiced the, the these exercises so so many times, so many different ways that he can go in and make it more effective. And maybe intensity is part of that formula too, that he knows how to, mm -hmm. to uh, derive more intensity from the lift. But more importantly, I think he understands how to do the lift better. Yeah. And that's what really, where all the results he can come set from. set up his body and adjust things like right on the fly, like immediately and just like get into it versus somebody that's going to, it's going to take a while for them to kind of get their body ready and adjusted to be able to kind of like produce that type of a, a optimal lift. Right. The other thing is that, uh, and this is not a, this is nowhere near controversial. Um, some exercises are just more effective than others. Just bottom line, like a good, you know, three sets of a barbell squat. Okay. Is going to be more effective for muscle and strength and performance than 15 isolation exercises combined working the same muscles, quads, hamstrings, glutes, abductors, adductors, all these isolation movements, for example, all of them, 15 sets versus three of just barbell squats. The barbell squats will get you there faster and better because it's so much more effective. Well, there's exercises, especially in the bodybuilding world, that are known as finishers, quote unquote finishers. These are movements that are saved for the end of the workout, mainly because they, they're they so fatigued at the end of the workout. Yeah, they're so easy like, stuff. Yeah, like it's like- Table flies and- yeah, it's all, these stuff, it's all these exercises yeah. that like, oh, I'm so fatigued, but this I can squeeze out, um, you know, two more sets or three more sets of these other movements. Well, when you work out a little every day versus a lot, sometimes you're, it's, it's easier to do the better exercises, the more effective ones. I yeah. can squat three sets every day, right? I could not do 14 sets of squats in one day. I could yeah. try, yeah. but halfway through, they're going to suck. So what would I do for my legs if I did all those sets in one day? It was probably going to look more like five sets of squats and then leg extensions and leg curls and all these other movements because I'm so fatigued. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you're able to do more of the effective exercises by doing short, frequent workouts than you are versus doing uh, longer, less frequent workouts. Again, back to the fatigue. Well, and there's there's a behavior angle here too, right? That, that studies aren't going to show this, right? They're gonna they're gonna try and compare the exercises and things like that, and we already know that the, the squats superior than that. But the behavioral part that people don't realize is that because you're only going in to do two or three movements, you naturally are going to pick the bigger bang for of your exercises. The reason why you pick the cable fly pec deck or the side chest press hammer strength is because you already did incline bench. You already did flat dumbbell. You already, you already yeah. did all the bangers. And so now you're like, I'm fatigued. I did all these things. Now what else can I do yeah. to finish my 15 sets of chest that I'm doing today? And so you go to these, you know, lesser exercises that aren't giving the same results. Now, if you go to the gym and you're like, Hey, I'm only doing three sets of chest. You're going to go sideways hammer strength machine. Like the, no, if you are, you're an idiot. Of time. Yeah, yeah. But you'd be silly to do that. You're going to go do one of the bangers and you're going to be fresh and you're going to get more out of it. So there's a, there's a behavioral component that you're getting here too by doing that is that, listen, I only got to pick two exercises. Well, what am I going to pick? I know I've heard a million times the, the, the top five movements. I'm going to pick one of those that's and, right. and that's going to be part of my workout. Well, that there's a great benefit to that because you choose those better exercises every time you get better results. That's right. The other part too is where people will make the argument like, well, yeah, but you're not burning many calories. Okay. Listen, the worst possible gauge of success of your workouts <laughs> is how many burn. calories you burn <laughs> while you work out. First of all, it's not substantial anyway. Go beat yourself up for an hour. Yeah. All those calories is nothing compared to how easy it is to eat them. Anyway, number two, the calories you burn while moving, your body very quickly figures out how to burn less calories to make up for it. Very quickly. And there's lots of studies on this. There's studies that show your behaviors are modified without you realizing it. So you end up moving less. There's studies that show your body just becomes 
more efficient with calorie storing. Your body will pair muscle down to make you lose, uh, to, to slow down your metabolism. Literally, the calories you burn while you move are inconsequential. Now, I'm not saying moving isn't healthy. It's always good to move. Moving is better than not moving if it's appropriate. But in terms of like fat loss and I got to burn these, that is a complete waste of time. Stop focusing on that. Instead, look at how you could speed up your metabolism. And that's a much more effective way at looking at calorie burn. How many calories can my body burn on its own? And how can I make that happen uh, in a hotter way uh, more often? How can I make my body want to burn more calories by itself? Well, that we've talked about that uh, ad nauseum on the podcast. It's building muscle. Build muscle. That's the way to do it. But here's the other part. When it comes to getting lean, it's, about, it's, al it's almost always about your diet. Speed up your metabolism and then look at your diet. You're not going to lose weight by trying to burn the calories off through exercise. No, period. End of story. That's a terrible strategy. I mean, and this is a, a good opportunity to talk about because probably one of our most popular questions is, you know, is this program for fat loss? Is this program for, you know, like people- <laughs> Your diet want, determines that. Yeah, what, when, when, when should I reduce my calories or what, when am I supposed to be in a calorie surplus or a deficit in this program? Well, it depends on your goal. Every, every program that we write is ideal for building muscle and ideal for burning body fat and how you eat accordingly will dictate that. That's it. Mm -hmm. So if your main focus is I want to get shredded and I want to lean and then I'm only going to be training 15, 20 minutes, okay, that's fine. Then eat in a caloric deficit while you train a 15 to 20 minute workout and you're going to get lean and shredded by doing that. If your main goal is to build muscle and you only got 15 to 20 minutes workout, then okay, then eat in a caloric sur surplus and that's going to do it. If you're looking for overall just health and balance and you feel pretty good body fat percentage wise, then undulate your calories. That's sometimes right. be in a surplus, sometimes be in a deficit. Now, here's the last thing I'll say, and this isn't necessarily, this is a point I think that should be made is that the biggest enemy for most people, or like I say, the biggest stumbling block for most people when it comes to getting sustainable results is consistency. It's just really hard for people to be consistent yeah. on a regular basis. It's much easier to be consistent if you do a little every day than it is to do a lot sometimes. It's just a fact. It's harder to take an hour out of your day, two or three days a week, than it is to take 15 to 25 minutes out of your day every single day. It's easy. It becomes a routine easier or faster. You build the skill of discipline easier. Um, you don't have to take aside as much time and schedule. It's like, oh, 20 minutes? That happens on accident sometimes. Let's make it happen. In our experience as coaches and trainers, that was the go-to strategy for someone with consistency issues. People think, oh, they have issues being consistent, make them work out less often. No, no, no. Make them work out way more often. Just make the workouts really short. Right. That improves consistency, uh, hands well, down. Well, and there's a, an interesting component to that, too. When you stop before, like, you get, like, super fatigued and, like, overwhelmed in terms of, like, the training session. Like, what that does in terms of, like, there's all of that, like, energy that now fuels you going into the next day. It's, yeah. it's almost like it's a catalyst for now. Uh, I get this like energy momentum that, that, that swing that kind of goes into the, you know, the following day. And then this is something that you can just slowly kind of build upon versus something that's just debilitating. Right. I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to take it all on at once and I'm just hammering my body because I'm like so far behind and whatever, you know, you, you tell yourself, but now it's like, I can barely move, you know, I'm, I'm sore, I'm hurting. Like there's just like a psychological component to that. That's powerful. So this might be a bit controversial for trainers because it doesn't fit well or serve their scheduling and doesn't serve them growing their business per se, initially at least. Uh, and that is if I could go back and do it all over again, and I wasn't paid by the hourly session to train people this is how I would train almost every one of my clients at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. It would be these 20 minute yep. type of show up every day. Yeah. Show yep. up every day. Just do one or two things. That's it. And then, you know, let's be consistent with God, that. Imagine how many people would have not quit. I know. They've had, and, they would, that. and that's the, here's, You're that's building the, a ritual. With that's them. the controversial part. And they would have right? loved it. They would have felt good. Yes. Yeah. That's the controversial part here. Right. Because I think this is what best serves the client. Now that I understand this and I've been mm -hmm. doing this long enough, but I also recognize that that is really difficult to do from a business perspective for client, for trainers who are getting billed by the hour to do this like 20 minute session for a client. But the reality is this is what would serve the client the best is to get them started, especially at the beginning. Okay. Even though we talk, can talk all day about how there's plenty of advanced people, I think that would serve them well to reduce their volume and actually train like this, that for sure, how everybody would start would be like this. It would be literally one to two movements every single day until that becomes a habit, like tying their shoe or brushing mm -hmm. their teeth. And then I would start to build on top of that until they get to a point where they look back and 
feeling like, holy shit, I'm training the gym every day for 45, 50 minutes, and I absolutely love it, and I've been that's crushing awesome. it. So we have a program called MAPS 15 Minutes that's all about this. There's two versions in the program. One of them uses a suspension trainer. This is ideal for people who convenience is everything. Then there's a barbell version for advanced lifters. That workout takes about 20 minutes. Here's what we're going to do with this episode. That program, we're going to make 50% off because of this episode. So if you want to try this like workout a little every day versus what you may be doing now, see how your body responds. MAPS 15 minutes is half off. Here's how you can get it. You go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the coupon code MFP15 for the 50% off uh, discount. 